comes a working for my good Yeah, she's intentional Never failing out things I'm working, I'm working for my good Cause she's intentional and it's never failing All things are working for my good He's He's intentional
the God of the mountain Is still the God of the valley And there is no place Your mercy and grace Can find me again His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. Good morning and welcome to Kingdom Word Ministry where we preach and teach the Word of God chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Praise God. I'm excited this morning. Praise God. Another day, another day above ground. Another opportunity to lift him up and to magnify his name. I don't take it for granted this morning. Praise God. That I'm here this morning. Praise God. I'm here because of his grace and his mercy. Praise the Lord. I, you feel like the Lord has blessed you to be where you are right now and have the activity to live in. You know who you are. Get a Lord a big hallelujah. Get a Lord a big thank you this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. So let's get right into the word. The word will be coming from Psalm 37, verse 1 through 7. Beginning with verse 1. Fear not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the work of iniquity. For they shall, be, they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as a green herd. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord. And wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prosper in his way. Because of the man who bring his wicked device to pass. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for allowing us together in your name. We don't take it for granted that we're here. We know that we're here because of your grace and mercy. So Father, I pray now that you would have your way. Have your way with your listeners. Have your way with me, God. And we're assured this morning that the word falls on good ground, it will come up again. So let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be accepted in our sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, in the mighty name of Jesus and the body of believers said, Amen. 
Amen. This morning, I'd like to talk to you from the subject, overcoming conflicts. Overcoming conflicts. We all will have conflict at some time or another. Sometime in life, there will be trouble coming your way. When life will feel like everything and every time you turn around, there's something standing in your way. You may experience pain for your problem, be drained by your discouragement and stained by your distress and suffering and possibly doubt in your faith and having confidence in the Lord. You may almost get to the point that you feel overwhelmed. In life, there will be predicaments. David was filled full of conflict. He, David, reflected back in his old age uh, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. David said in Psalms 37 and 25, he said, I have been young and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. David had that reflection that he could look back over his life and encounter and have this insight on what it was like when he was young. And he, he knew that the Lord was with him when he was young. And he said, now I'm old. Never have I seen it in all my lifetime. We encounter these attitudes and feelings frequently when we are facing conflict. This section provides insight on how to deal with these feelings and attitudes in our conflict. David says in verse 1 of our text this morning, David says that, that you ought to channel, you ought to channel your anger, cease your anger. You need to control your anger. He said in verse 1, he said, fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the works of iniquity. When we see the word frat, we usually interpret the word to mean that they are fearful or, or they are worrying. But that does not seem to be the correct translation of this word. The word frat in the Hebrew means to be hot. You are hot, you are angry, you are, you are at the point of furious or in, indignant. You are burning on the inside. In, in, in other words, you, you to be angry. You are angry, praise God. It's about anger, not worry or frat or fear, praise God. My brothers and sisters, saints do get anger. Angry, praise God. There will be some anger in your life. Paul tells us that there's a way to deal with your anger. He says in Ephesians 4 and 26, Paul said, Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. The Bible does not tell us that we will not feel angry. Praise God. But it points out that the important way to handle our anger properly, praise God. Don't let your anger begin to boil up on the inside and cause you to become bitter and destroy you within, praise God, this morning. We need to be able to control it. Paul tells us to deal with our anger and deal with it immediately this morning in a way that build relationship with, with others rather than destroy them. Praise God. Don't let the sun this morning, praise God, go down on your anger or go down on your wrath this morning, praise God. We need to deal with it quickly. God, God wants us to deal with it, our anger first. Before you try to do anything, we need to deal with our anger first. We need to be able to control our anger, praise God. Give us a hallelujah when you're facing conflicts. If we lose control of ourselves, our conflict or complication will, will only escalate. You must cool down before you can learn to begin to find solution to your conflict. Do you, you ever notice when, when, when in sports, after a loss, and even the ones that win after a loss, they give the person time. They give the person at least 20 to 25 minutes to cool down because it might say something that he 
he or she would want to say at the particular time. So they give them time to cool down, to cool off. God said, cool off, control your anger. Think about what you're doing before you say it. He would say, hallelujah. He would say, glory to God. How can we keep our cool this morning? Praise God. David tells us to ignore petty uh, disagreement. Paul, he, 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 said, he said, ignore petty disagreement. Even Solomon in, in, in Proverbs 19 and 11 said, oh, a man's wisdom gives him patience. It is to, to his glory to overlook an offense. Wisdom helps you, praise God. It helps you to have self-control and patience with others. When you have wisdom, it will give you the discernment you need in handling your conflict this morning, praise God. God will allow you to sit back and, and control your anger when you don't be so hasty to speak. Most problems are petty. And a wise man knows when to ignore those petty problems. We won't, you don't let those petty problems cause you to, to say something or do something that you will regret. You got to be wise enough to be slow to speak and quick to hear this morning. Give us a hallelujah. Give us a glory to God. And so doing, we will gain glory and honor and respect from others if we can show this type of grit and control in our life. Give us a hallelujah. David goes on to warn us against jealousy in verse 1 and 2. He said, fret not thyself because of evildoer, neither be thou envy against the works of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and withered as a green herd. David said jealousy is a problem. How many know the day that jealousy could be a problem? The anger and conflict that we have with others are caused by envy. Envy is, is, is pain. It's humiliation or discontent, discontent at the superiority of the excellence or the prosperity of others. When we see other people, praise God, are prospering and have things going on, we have a jealousy spirit. We begin to look at them and, and compare ourselves to them. Can we say hallelujah? Can we say glory to God? When we compare ourselves with others, we are more highly, that, that are more highly gifted or favored, and we are, are in, in, in most successful jealousy come in. The feeling refers to here is in verse 1 is that which springs up in our mind. It goes in our mind. It gets in our mind. When we see people who are corrupt and wicked, have that wicked character and that are prospering while we are endeavoring to, to do the right thing, and we are left in poverty and is disappointed in tears and they are prospering. It hurts, praise God, and you become jealous. He said, neither be thy image against the works of iniquity. Don't, don't get, be jealous of what a person is doing and is sin, a person that's sin for doing. Be able to control yourself. Don't let that anger stir up. On, don't let the jealousy get inside of you. We should never envy evil people. Even though some may be extremely popular or excessively rich, praise God. No matter how much they have, it will fade and vanish like grass. They will wither away and die. Those who follow God live differently from the wicked. And in the end, they will have treasure in heaven, praise God. What an unbeliever get on earth, he may have a, a long, a lifelong lasting time, praise God, on this earth while he's living here. His lifetime here on earth might last a long time, praise God. But what you get from following God lasts forever. Can you get somebody out there that knows what God is talking about, praise God? Those that are living here now and, and prospering and have everything going and living a wicked life, it only lasts for a lifetime. But those who are following God this morning, praise God, will last forever. God said hey, it's going to last forever, praise God. David says our focus should now shift 
on the Lord. He said, trust, I'll trust you, shift from anger and jealousy to God by trusting in the Lord in verse 3. He said, trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. When conflicts comes into our lives, we should put our trust in the Lord. Place your trust, place everything you have in the Lord and stay out of trouble this morning, praise God. He would say hallelujah. Do what is right, even though others are unfaithful or doing what is, is wrong, praise God. You trust God. The word trust means to put your confidence, your security in, some, in something or someone this morning, praise God. This is what we ought to do, praise God. Put our trust, our confidence in Jesus Christ this morning. Can we say hallelujah? Can we say glory to God? We put our faith, we put our trust, we put our security in the Lord and turn over our situation to the Lord this morning, praise God. When you put your trust in the Lord this morning, praise God, turn it loose, praise God. Give it to God and just turn it loose. He said, cast all your cares upon you, for he cares for you. Throw your situation into his lap this morning. He would say hallelujah. He would say glory to God. David was one who had to do this often because he faced all kind of conflict and complication with people, especially with Saul and with his son Absalom, praise God. The Psalms 1, 18 and 8 said, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put our confidence in man. Man cannot do anything to hold you, and man can do not anything that's going to help you, praise God, to be able to go through the trials and tribulation of life and have that peace when all things around you are going, are sinking, praise God. Can we say hallelujah? Can we say glory to God? The Psalms 3 tells us to trust in the Lord <clears throat> and do good. So said, I dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. David simply said two words. He said, do good. This is a short but powerful command. He said, put your trust in the Lord and your knees. Put your knees in the Lord. Because the wicked are profiting by doing evil, and the righteous are not. It is tempting to praise God, to do evil, to just to prosper, praise God. But David tells us in this situation, no matter what's happened, you keep on doing good. If you trust in the Lord and, and, and do good, he said you will dwell in the land and barely shall, shall be fed. David said there's a place for believers. There's a place where believers would dwell. They, they are being prepared for them right now. You don't have to worry about what's going on on the other side because Jesus is already working some things out. When we look at John 14 and 2, he said, In my Father's house are many mentioned. If it was not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Keep on doing good, for God has a place for you. He has a place for you, and he has a place for me. The wicked may last for a lifetime, but the, our place lasts forever, praise God. And you don't have to fight. You don't have to push. You don't have to worry about. God has this place prepared this morning, praise God. He has it prepared for you. When you don't have it on this side, don't worry about it, praise God. God said, I already got a place that's better than what you have here on the other side, can we say hallelujah? Can we say glory to God? It's always good to know when you don't have something here and when you don't have something where you are right now, there's always something better for you on the other side. Can we say hallelujah? Can we say glory to God? My God has made provision this morning, praise God. He has made provision for me. We, we, we shall be what? We shall be fed, praise God. The Lord going to feed us, praise God. He'll feed us when we're in, in our needs, whatever we need. Paul says, Philippians 4, 19, he said, But my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. 
Paul said, I, I see what you're doing to me. I see how you have made your sacrifice, but I want to tell you that my God shall supply all of your needs this morning. Praise God. Give me say hallelujah. Because you're making those sacrifices, because you've done these things for me. We can trust God that, that God will always meet our needs this morning. Give me say hallelujah. Whatever we need on earth, he will always supply it. Praise God. Even if it's the courage of, of facing death, praise God. As Paul did, praise God. Whatever we need in heaven, he said he will supply this morning. Can we say hallelujah? Can we say glory to God? We must remember this morning, praise God. However, that is a difference between our wants and our need. God said he will supply all of your needs, praise God. Can we say hallelujah? Can we say glory to God? We find our focus now to be on consecration, praise God, in verse 4. David says, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of the heart. David's instruction to us is to delight ourselves in the Lord. This speaks of devotion or affection or interest, praise God. If we delight in the Lord, there will be no room for disappointment, praise God. We say hallelujah. Your desires for doing God's work is important to God. It's important to him. He shall give thee the desires of your heart if you delight thyself, praise God. God will grant you what you want, praise God, when you delight yourself in him this morning. Can we say hallelujah? Can we say glory to God? But what you want will be great affected by your delight in the Lord, praise God. You have to have that delight. If we delight in him, we will not, we will not desire the things that the flesh crave for, that the flesh desire, but we will desire what God wants this morning. Praise God. Can we say hallelujah? God will quickly grant those desires to you, praise God, when we have our mind and our heart and our commitment to God this morning. How many can know that God is ready to do something for you this morning if you delight yourself in the Lord? Can we say hallelujah? Can we say glory to God? There's a commitment, praise God, to your desires. Verse 5 said, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. He shall bring it to pass. Praise God. David said, commit thy way. Commit thy way unto the Lord. God wants you to turn your, your way unto him. Praise God. It's like, you, it's like God is controlling your way. It's like, having a bat, it's like having a ball in your hand. Praise God. And you roll that ball from your hand to Jesus' hand. Praise God. It's no longer in your hand. It's no longer in your troll. In your control, it, but it's in God's hand, and, and God has control of that ball. God has control of your ways this morning, praise God. David said, commit your way, praise God. Roll your rights away to God. Roll your commitment, praise God. Your way, praise God, to God. Give to God, and God will take care of your situation. We are to roll our way upon the Lord this morning. Give us a hallelujah. Give us a glory to God. This comes with trust this morning, praise God. He said, trust also in him. You can trust God to do the right thing this morning. How many know that you can, because if, if you can't trust God, who can you trust? God is the one that you can put your trust in because he know he would be there. He will never leave you enough and say he's always with you, praise God, no matter where you go. They said, commit thy way unto the Lord. Invest in God this morning, praise God. Invest all that you have in God, all your beings, all your thoughts, all your mind, all your ways into God. Do his work this morning, praise God. Put your time and energy and money in the Lord's work. Commit yourself this morning to God. Let God roll that ball. Let God have that ball. Commit it to God. Commit it to Jesus this morning, praise God. Let him take control. That commitment means that let him roll that ball. Let him roll your life. Let him lay it out the way he wants to lay it out. You have no more control when you give it to him, praise God. Give us a hallelujah. 
Can we say glory to God? I like what we find here that David says here in verse 6. David says in verse 6 that he, he'll vindicate your life in the clear light of day and stump you with approval at high noon. Stamp you with approval at high noon, praise God. God would vindicate the righteous this morning, praise God. He would vindicate you, praise God. God is dealing with you right now, praise God. He's getting ready to, he's getting ready to shine his light on you this morning. The day will come when the righteous will be given glory and honor, unlike the glory and honor of the wicked that are obtained when they're doing their evil. God has a day for you this morning. Can we say hallelujah? It shall be so visible to men as the light of the sun at noontime, praise God. Can we say hallelujah? Can we say glory to God? God will show forth God his glory. He will show forth his glory to his servant this morning, praise God. You will shine this morning, praise God. Can we say hallelujah? Can we say glory to God? Man may be having his glory right now, but God said there's going to come a day. I'm going to cut all this stuff off and I'm going to show forth your, your glory, praise God. And it's going to be like in the mid part of the day, praise God. Can we say hallelujah? Can we say glory to God? Praise his name. David said rest in the Lord in verse 7. He said rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospered in his way. Because of the man who bringeth wicked device to pass. There is a place in the Lord today, praise God. There is a place in the Lord to rest, praise God. Do we know that today, praise God? There's a place in the Lord to rest. Rest in the Lord and wait patient for him because God has promised to faithfully take care of those who put their trust in him this morning. Praise. We can rest in the Lord this morning, praise God. World can give you no rest, but God can give you rest and peace, praise God, when you're in the storms of life. Psalm 91 and 9 and 1 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. We can wait patiently for him. Instead of fretting and, and fearing that God has forgotten you or, or forgotten us or intended to, put, to place evil in our way, praise God. Rest in the Lord, it said. Rest means to, is a particular kind of rest. It's the kind of rest of, of silence and ceasing from words of, of self-defense, praise God. We don't have to defend ourselves. The idea is that we will, that we will not speak to vindicate ourselves this morning. We will trust in God to protect us, praise God. We don't have to fight our battle. Vengeance, God said, is mine, said the Lord. Can we say hallelujah? God will give you the power to go through these trials and tribulation in life. Can we say hallelujah this morning, praise God. Isaiah 40 and 28 through 29 said, Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the end of the earth, fainteth not? Neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He give power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases their strength. You can't search. You can't understand, praise God. All that God has in store for you right here on earth, not only in heaven, praise God. When you're going through, praise God, and you are about to faint, he will give you power to increase your strength this morning. Can we say hallelujah? You can overcome those conflicts this morning by controlling your anger and jealousy and commitment and trust God. So we need to just rest this morning, praise God, to rest in the Lord. You ever been so tired, praise God, that you, you lay down, but you can't rest because you're in a strange place? But when you find a place that you can rest and you, uh, there's quietness there and there's security there and everything is in the right place and everything is comfortable, you rest and it's hard for you to wake up when trials and 
things are bumping around you because you are at rest. Jesus said you can have that rest with him this morning. He will vindicate you this morning, praise God. He will be there in the end for you this morning. He will be there in the end for me. You can have that power to overcome conflict just by asking Jesus this morning, praise God, to come into your life. You can have that power. You can have that assurance this morning. Pray. You can have a conflict this morning just by controlling your anger. And you can, you can ask God to help you, praise God. Just ask him to come into your life and repent of your sin, praise God. He will do this for you, praise God. He said, he said, if you repent of your sin, you ask him to come in your life and repent of your sin, he said he will be there for you. It's because he's standing at that door and knock. And if any man will hear his voice and let him come in, he will come in and sit with him. He will come in and, and minister to him, praise God. He will come in and commune with you this morning, praise God. If you believe that Jesus, that God sent his son Jesus to this earth to die for you and for me, to die on the cross, we might have a right to the tree of life. He went to that cross and he nailed all of our sin on the cross once and for all. He died. He gave up the ghost. They didn't take his life. He laid it down for us. If you believe that this morning, that he took him down and put him in a borrowed tomb. And three days later, he got up. God raised him up from the dead, praise God, from that grave. He now sits on the right hand of the Father. The Bible tells me, my brothers and sisters, that you are saved. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the word. We thank you, God, for showing us how to deal with conflict. How to overcome conflicts. How to control our anger. How to, to, uh, to, to be in a place, God, in our mind and our soul, to trust you, put all of our trust in you this morning, God. We want to trust you this morning, praise God. We want you to have, our, have your way in our life, God. We want to commit our way. We want to roll our life in your hand for you to take it and control it this morning. Everything we do, God, we give you glory. We give you praise, God. Have your way, God. Have your gay, the ones that are listening today, God, in here and on, 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 on the YouTube and around the world, God, who can see or hear today, God. You will bless them continually, God. Bless those that are crying out to you this morning, God. God, we know that you have a long arm of forgiveness, God. We give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, in the body of believers this morning said, Amen. Praise God. This word has been a blessing to you this morning. Praise God. Just send us a text. Call us. Let us know. Write us. Let us know that God has blessed you. Praise God. And he's doing some things in your life that you need to share with someone else. And if you want to be a blessing to Kingdom Word Ministry, praise God. Just text Kingdom Word to 22525. And remember, Jesus Christ is Lord of Lord and King of king praise god mercy and grace can find me